Hi, this is April with Craft Knife Chronicles and I'm here to share with you the process that I went through to create the Mother Goose pop-up box. I'm filming this as I'm working through the process so some of the things that I talk about at the beginning they may not come to fruition but we'll see how things go as the project unfolds. So my idea was uh, when I saw this paper from Graphic 45, the Mother Goose line, um, to make some kind of a pop-up. And I've, I've made a lot of pop-ups in the past and I wanted to try to do something different and I thought about using uh, this new box from um, that's part of the Graphic 45 staples. So my idea is to put the pop-up in the box so that when you open the lid you'll see the pop-up and then there should still be room underneath in the box and I'm right now I'm thinking about having a drawer or an opening in the front uh, that would open up or uh, pull out and then possibly making a tag book with the tags that came with the box. We'll see what happens with that as we move along. Um, the box uh, as it comes, I have a rubber band around it because I was testing some things out. It's it's made to be a, a, a book box, I think is what they call it, and, and opens like this. So I put the rubber band around it as I'm testing it because obviously if the pop-up's going to go in here, this can't uh, flip flip down. So put that back around here. So um, I'm going to have a scene of some of the characters from this paper and I've already uh, cut out some of them um, just to try them out. This is the first group that I have and um, I just uh, fussy cut them. I like using these um, Cutter B scissors and then um, I also have reinforced them with a, a tip I learned from Anna from Anna's Paper Creations and that is to use some um, matte medium. I happen to use a lot of this so I have a, a, a big jar of it. You don't obviously need a big jar like this. Any kind of matte medium um, to, to put on both sides. I put a coat on both sides of the uh, images and that just gives them a little more uh, sturdiness and so then the next thing was to uh, think about what the pop-up would look like and uh, you can see here I've played around with placement and I wrote on here uh, what my final ideas were so that I wouldn't forget it when I went to put it together so for instance Little Boy Blue would go right here on this place and he'll sit over here. Now, this is just the mock-up made out of some um, cardstock, but I'm going to build it out of uh, green cardstock and then use decorative papers from the paper line to, to uh, you know, make the hills and the scene come to life. Um, so, it's a basic pop-up construction, you know, it will sit flat this way or then when it bends it will be flat this way when the box is closed. There is one consideration, you can see even in this mock-up you may not be able to see how thick it is already and it doesn't have the paper of the characters in there. So um, what's going to have to happen in here is that the scene actually goes down inside of the box. The, the fold will still end up being at that crease but the front part here, which I've kept long to see how long I need it, will actually be probably about a half an inch or so down inside of the box so that the box can completely uh, close when, um, when it's in its closed position. Then I'll have some kind of scene on the front here, I imagine. haven't gotten that far. So um, that's the getting started part, and next I'll start building the pop-up scene. So 
So now I've prepped the pieces of green cardstock which will form the base of the pop-up and what I did was I measured one piece to be the entire base come around the back and come down and form this this back pop-up and then the se second piece will form the two intermediary layers and then a third smaller piece will make this section right here and I will wait to create the two little mini ones until uh, they're they're needed. So here is the first uh, piece and I've scored it according to the dimensions that were on my uh, mock-up and prepped with some score tape so that it'll be strong. The key to making sure that this folds flat and nice is that whenever you're gluing or in my case taping is to not try to line something up and do it in a three-dimensional mode but to always have it flat when you're making any connections. So let me remove this score tape and we will do that and burnish this connection with a bone holder. And now we have the back. So now taking the next piece, this piece um, is going to form two parts of the, I always have to think about how it goes. It goes this way and it's going to come around like this. So in order to do that, I think I'll make this attachment first. And again, we want to do that in a flat manner. So I'll pull off this tape backing, hold this down, and get that burnished there. Now, this was made, measured, so that this top piece on this one would line up with this crease on that one. So I'm going to put that one on first, and then after it's on, I can flatten this out and make this, this other join. So let me do that. And keep everything lined up here, nice and square. That should do it. And now to create this part, I'll again remove this score tape backing and put this down flat and burnish there. Let's see how we're doing. So, I think you can see those channels coming in there. So we just have, and then I'll fold it this way and a bigger black fold. Oops. There. This bigger bone holder, make sure it's flat this way as well. It has to close this way and open this way. And then we have this last little one, and he's going to go right on the front here. And again, he was measured so that the top could line up. right along that crease. And then we will again remove this tape backing. Put that down there. And then this should fold nice and flat here. Sometimes it needs a little encouragement. Especially when it's getting thick. This is heavier cardstock than might have been advisable, but this is was the right shade of green, so I decided to use it. So here we have 
the final assembly I'm going to leave this part long for right now because I'm not exactly sure how long it needs to be and I have length to my paper there. So now the fun part, decorating the pop-up and making the little scene come to life. So now I've started to put together the pattern paper and the characters for the scene on the pop-up card. And I started by putting pattern paper on each of the horizontal um, parts of the pop-up, the, the top of the steps, if you will. And I've been using both a combination of paper from the 8x8 pad and the 6x6 pad. Now since this is 6 and 3 8 inch wide, I've had to do a little patching with some of the, the paper that comes from the 6x6 pad, but hopefully it won't be too noticeable once the characters get on there. And you may be able to tell that I've also done some, some shading using some uh, distress inks and different shades of green um, to sometimes uh, just uh, give some dimension to the paper or in the case of the paper with the stars just to kind of tone down um, the contrast between the stars and the background. Um, I've also added just a little strip that I cut from a border from one of the, the 8x8 sheets and uh, colored with a little bit of uh, brown uh, distress ink because the little boy blue with the haystack is going to go over in this location. So uh, when I cut these strips, I cut them about a sixteenth of an inch uh, short of the dimension of each step just so there wouldn't be any um, uh, resistance when it folds up and made sure that uh, there wasn't any as I attached them. And so then I uh, started building each of the backgrounds for the front parts of the steps and what I, how I did that was I just used some repositionable tape and tried different things out. You can see this is how the back step is going to go. And so I created each of the fronts of the four steps in turn and I'll be attaching them with some score tape next. And then the next part will be to add the characters. And I wanted to show you a couple of special things I've done with uh, some of the characters. The little girl that's jumping rope, uh, I took some wire and I just uh, bent it around and put another a patch on the top to, to hold the wire in place so that wire that will simulate the rope um, will stay in place. And for Mary and her lamb, in the image, the lamb is right on top of Mary, and I want this lamb to be a little bit in front, so I took another image and just made a little patch for her skirt where the lamb's head was right here. And then for Humpty, the, uh, the wall, I've cut out a little section of it here because I wanted to make a piece that would fit in here to uh, complete the wall because it's this image is made as if it's right up against the, the left edge of a, of a border and I wanted to finish off the wall so I took some uh, there's some cream paper on the back side of some of the 6x6 six six, and I just made a little piece that I'm going to glue in here and kind of complete that wall there so that uh, I just used, you know, drew some little pieces in there, used some uh, some uh, distress markers with and a watercolor effect to create that. So that piece will slip underneath there and complete Humpty. So uh, I've uh, so I'll make put those together, add my front pieces on, and then I'll start layering uh, my characters in the the pattern that I designed in the beginning. So I'll be back when that's done. So I have added all of the pieces of the scene to the pop-up base. Uh, you can see that I followed my scheme that I had in my uh, mock-up to begin with. And 
everything still fits nice and folds down well but there is some thickness to it which I anticipated and have um, made allowances for the other thing that I didn't speak about before is you might be able to see here that the jumping rope for this uh, girl just clears this this fold that I have right here and this is the front of the box so one thing to be careful of when you're designing these is that the height of each element when it's folded down is not going to be uh, further than the edge or else things will either creep out if it's a card or in this case it would be a problem because this is going to fit down inside of the box so um, so the pop-up is basically done I did add an extra little little level right here for this sheep that's following uh, Mary or lamb that's following Mary and I may add, end up adding something in the front here and something on the back I haven't quite decided but those those can wait so now I'm going to uh, turn my attention to the box and the box when this goes in it's going to sit right on the crease of the box here and then it has to go down inside of the box when the box closes because of the, the thickness so in order to do that what I'm going to do is to make a a platform to support the pop-up inside of here and I've already cut some pieces of chipboard what I'm doing is I've layered three thick that that may be overkill but I'm kind of a belt and suspenders person so I've uh, layered three three pieces of chipboard and I'm going to put them on. I've got two for the front and the back here and then one piece that will sit on this side over here and then I have a little piece of uh, 1 8 inch square stock that I'll use to support this edge over here I'll show you what that's for in a second and then there'll be a piece of chipboard that slides in and can sit on here and then the base of the pop-up can attach there. So what I decided to do is I wanted to take advantage of this space that's down in the bottom and have either a drawer or just an opening where a little mini album or mini book could go inside. Um, because the front will have a closure that comes down I've decided that there'll be a side opening to uh, create access to that base area and so what I did was um, I figured out by putting in my my little support stick here exactly where an opening should be cut and just using my craft knife let me get these guys out of the way so you can see I'll take this rubber band off too. So I've made a cut that is beneath the platform and I've made it on three sides and I was trying to decide how I could finish off this bottom edge when I realized that I could pay, pull up this top ply of, of this side of the box. So what I'm going to do is leave that ply intact and then just cut off cut off this piece and then fold this and glue it down and then I'll have a nice finished edge on the the bottom there so I haven't quite done that I wanted to show you how I was going to do that now a couple of other things that I've prepped here is I put a magnet in the front uh, there's going to be a closure that somehow comes down off the top and to hold it all closed I'm using um, in this case this is a 5 8 inch magnet they're basic gray magnets and I like to you can probably see there I've I've just cut a little rec uh, square with my craft knife so I can recess it in 
so it's perfectly flush here. These are very thin magnets, but I still like to have it flush. Um, and then on the top, I'm going to try something new this time. I ha still haven't attached this back piece yet because uh, my idea is to take a, a piece of chipboard and that has a magnet here in the back and using a uh, fastener, put this in here, what will happen is that when it's, uh, when the box is closed, the magnet will hold, and there'll be another one over here as well, it'll hold this closed, but then when you want to see the pop-up, so that you don't have to keep holding it open, There'll be this magnet that's up here at the top will go towards this magnet and be able to hold that box open. So we'll see if that works. I've again recessed the magnets here so that if it doesn't, uh, they'll be hidden underneath the top image and, and uh, won't be seen. So it's, it won't be a problem if it doesn't end up working. But I wanted to uh, complete that and put the fasteners in here before I do the gluing. Uh, to attach this right here and then I also will um, paint the edges because I'm going to just bring the images and, and decorative paper I'm not going to wrap anything so I'm going to paint the edges um, and finish that off and then we'll be back to see what's next So here we are back and as you can see I've painted and I decided to choose red because I thought it would be a nice contrast with both the image that I'm going to have on the, the lid of the box and the papers that are going to go uh, around the outside. Uh, but before we look at the outside uh, in any more detail, let me show you the pop-up because it's been added to the inside. I did some layering in the background here using uh, a paper that came from the 6x6 six six pad. And since I really liked it uh, because it had just the right amount of blue and not too busy. So uh, because it's a little bit smaller than the width of the pop-up, I just added some different borders here um, to make up the difference. And I uh, hopefully you agree that they enhanced the design. So the pop-up is in here. I added a sticker from uh, the sticker sheet here and let me put the little holders up here that hold the pop-up so that the pop-up can stay up without um, having to hold it up. It's, it's working pretty well. I had to increase the size of one magnet in order for it to work exactly the way I wanted it to look. But um, I added um, Mother Goose and a cow jumping over the moon up here and a little goose here. So I think the pop-up assembly is done. So let's see what else I've done on the outside here. As I showed you a minute ago, I've got the, I've covered the idea I had for holding up the, um, the cover, uh, these little guys are covered with paper and they snap into place because there's some magnets behind there. And as, as you recall, I had to do this piece uh, before doing anything else so that I could glue the, the back on here. Um, I've also put on a closure on the front. It has a magnet. You can see the magnet hiding behind here right now because there's no paper on top of it. And then I used, uh, again, one of the images from the sticker, and I've got it on some uh, chipboard here. Uh, you, if you have eagle eyes, you might see that this there's some yellow hiding behind this red on the ribbon. I originally uh, thought I wanted to have the ribbon yellow, which I liked, except for there was too much of a contrast here uh, showing for uh, on the border so I, I care carefully painted it red and uh, was lucky not to mess that up and I just added some little wooden bowls that I painted to the 
to the bottom just to give it a little bit of height. I like boxes to have some height. Um, so before I decide what papers to go around the, the side, I'm going to put the, the top image on. You can see this is what I've done, is I've taken the um, image from the paper pad This is the main image on the, the front page of the paper pad, and obviously it's too big. So what I did was I, I cut it in two, and I removed the sky background here, came down here, got the moon, got rid of Humpty and, and uh, Mary, and then cut another piece that has the flowers and the lamb, and just kind of married them together and then use some of uh, the blue paper from the 6x6 pad as the background. And uh, I'll attach that next. I just wanted to uh, show you what was happening underneath here before I attach that down. And it was some uh, delicate, fussy uh, cutting. I did lose part of the, the G on the goose here, but I saved it and added it back on. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm happy with how it came out. So that'll be the, the front, and then next I'll choose papers for the sides, and then uh, work on the last part, which will be uh, the drawer, or if there's not a drawer, just what the, the opening and a, co a cover for this opening. Uh, you can see I put some magnets in there. I don't know if I had those in there the last time we, I was with you and then uh, make a little uh, mini album or book to go inside of there. So, that's where we are at this point. So here we are with the completed box. I've gone ahead and added the image that I showed you last time to the top cover and then um, put patterned paper around all of the sides. On the right side, there's this is the uh, drawer, and I'll show you that in a minute. And on the left side, it looks similar to the right side, but it's false. It, this does not pull out. So let's look at the drawer for a moment. It's a very simple construction. It's just a chipboard box uh, with five sides, four sides in the bottom, and then I added an additional piece of chipboard here on the front, uh, and then there's this button uh, that is one of the, the element. This is a sticker from uh, the paper line, and I just cut out a chipboard round to put that on and put a couple of little chipboard discs behind it to give it some depth so that you can um, get your fingers on it to pull it out. Uh, and that was fastened on with a um, brad before I added this the front drawer cover to the box itself. And there are two magnets hidden underneath here. I don't really think it was necessary to have them after all. I mean, the drawer fits in nicely, um, but the magnets just give a, a little extra security to it. So that is the completion of the box, and next we'll look at the little mini book that goes inside. So this is the little mini book that goes inside of the box, and I made it from the tags that came inside of the box, uh, the Graphic 45 Staples box that I used to make the pop-up box. Um, I had to cut them down just a little bit because my box, um, because it slides inside, it was a little bit smaller. So I just trimmed a little bit off the sides and the bottom and then rounded the corners so that the tags would still fit in there. 
and then it's a some uh, kind of a basic accordion book inside of here I did uh, add some some pockets that I'll show you in a minute and then the closure the ribbon starts and it's tucked underneath this front uh, element and then on the back I used one of the uh, pieces from the pockets and tags uh, accessories to the paper line that's like a, a button or a belt buckle kind of closure and so the ribbons can slip underneath here in the back and then come around and tie in the front. I'm not the world's best bow maker but it does the trick. So if I undo this and then release the ribbons from the back You can see it's uh, an accordion book. There's some extra pages on the front and there's some pullouts. You can see more of those details in the finished project video. And then on the back side there's more uh, of the pockets and uh, uh, paper elements as well. So let me just show you how I made this. I wanted to have some length to the, the book so I ended up using two pieces of 12 by 12 paper to get to the size that I wanted. Each of the panels are three inches by four and a quarter, three inches wide by four and a quarter tall. And then I've added some extra little pieces uh, here that I'll show you what they're for in a minute. So this is the the main piece, it's a, it's a nine inches total by nine and a half, and the secondary piece is also nine by nine and a half. It has some extra little flaps here. So, uh, and the only reason that I added these on was so that I wouldn't have to have a separate piece of paper for for joining, um, and then the ones that are on the side here that say reinforcement hopefully you can see that um, what happens when the when the book the book folds in half like like this and then here's the the basic accordion -ness to it but the front side is going to have this pocket and I added these flaps on here so that I went to reinforce that edge so that it would have a a nice edge and not just the cut paper edge so that's what those two are for and then this one on the bottom just flips around so that it's um, can come in here and help make the pocket I cut these at a, a miter and so that there's no bulk and the paper elements will cover them up so that is the first section comes together like that and then a second section which again has one of those pockets like I just showed you with the reinforcements on the side I always forget which way they go makes this little pocket here and then this act last last piece right here is used to attach to the first book first piece to end up making the very long um, book. So that's how that comes together. And then it's just a simple matter of this is the, the leftover tag from the, the staples box. It comes with three tags and I only used two to make the book. As I said before I had to cut this down a little to make it fit in there and then I just put some heavy duty score tape on the back and um, line the bottom edge of the cover up with the bottom edge of the book so that when it's open and on display it can stand nicely. Um, just put that on like that and add the other cover on this side and the closure and the book would be done. So. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I put this project together. Um, I, it was a great fun project. I love this colorful paper line and I hope you're encouraged to try making something of your own.
Thanks for watching. Bye for now.